these couple things and I'll let you look, okay? Okay, say E for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, that's okay. That's that's what we need to see. Try to go just a little bit lower. Like it, it felt really strange. Yeah. your epiglottis okay uh -huh. it covers your airway when you swallow and then this bumpy thing here is your tongue and then this back wall thing that's your pharynx that I was talking about yeah so that's your pharynx and then down here if you just focus on your breathing for a second those are your vocal cords so they look good the color of them is very nice they're white they're not red or like super veiny or anything like that, so that's awesome news. Good. Okay? So then what I'll have you do is just hold out that E at a comfortable pitch for me again. <laughs> notice there is maybe a little bit the epiglottis kind of pushes back a little bit to kind of cover when we're up here to cover the view of the vocal cords just a little bit right mm -hmm. and that is because it's connected to your tongue down here right mm -hmm. that is a sign that you're engaging your tongue just a little bit not very much at all but huh. just a little bit let's give her some more water oh we yeah. have it give yourself some more water please <laughs> Okay, swallow again. We're going to try to clear off my camera. And let's try another one. Good. That's perfect. Okay, now try that high-pitched E. Did you 
see how the pharynx kind of contracted in, like it almost looked like um, like a taco shell almost, kind of folded a little bit? Uh-uh. Okay. I, I would have to so kind of be looking for it yeah. ahead of time, I think. Watch the back wall of your throat, that mm -hmm. back wall, and then do that high-pitched D again, okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. And relax. So that's that pharyngeal that I was wondering if you were kind of engaging those pharyngeal muscles. Uh -huh. So you are a little bit. You are a little bit. And then when you try to go really high, try to go really, really high. See how that's so compressed there? Uh-huh. So lots of compression, lots, and did you see how your tongue kind of pulled back as well? Uh-huh. So lots of tension with uh -huh. that, I would say. Now normally, do a comfortable E. So see now, there you go. That epiglottis is peeking out a little bit more, so I think the more you use your voice, at first it wasn't even that much tension. At first there was no tension. But I think the more you use your voice, the more you start to use tension, which is why maybe like at first it's okay, uh -huh. and then after you use it, you start to feel that more tightness and things like that. Um, or maybe even as you like try to go high, your body gets tight and then it's not relaxing. It just stays kind of, it keeps that pattern. But let's just try to do a nice comfortable E like really soft like you were going to sing to a, a baby, sing a baby to sleep. So see there we've got a little bit of that epiglottis engaging but not very much of that pharyngeal wall like we saw before. And what you'll notice, okay, I'm going to show you the ventricular fold so if you relax get a little closer. So on either side of the vocal cords, there and there, yep. Those are your ventricular folds. Those really aren't engaging, oh, okay. I would say. I think it's mostly your tongue and your pharyngeal muscles that are engaging, huh. okay? Um, yeah, the, the ventricular folds aren't engaging a whole lot, I would say. I think it's mostly um, the tongue and the pharynx. Do you want to sing, like, it can be literally anything, it doesn't even have to be words, um, sing a little something? Sure. Okay. Uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do. Mm -hmm. So see how there, we couldn't even see your vocal cords really because the epiglottis yeah. back so much. So that's that tongue. The tongue really engaging, but again, the ventricular folds aren't super engaging very much. Huh. A lot of the tongue, I think, a lot of the tongue in the pharynx. Um, so let's do that again. Try to keep a really conscious effort of keeping your tongue a little bit further forward in your mouth while you're singing. Let's see if that helps at all. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si. Yeah. yeah. So I think if we do continue doing those tongue stretches, I think that will be helpful for you. Now, I should say, some engagement of the tongue is normal because when you want that singer's format, that singer's ring, uh -huh. you engage the tongue because it creates a rounder space and that's when we get that nice ringing tone. Uh -huh. But I do think you are engaging a little bit more than we would like to see. Huh. Okay. Do you want to see yourself do anything else? So. Am I looking at a mirror image? Like yes. this is my right side? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and the epiglottis is in the front right here, right? Yes. And this is the back And so that's the back, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe could I, I don't know if it would be helpful if you're already seeing what's happening, but maybe if I um, try doing something a little more strenuous and yeah. also like, when I'm speaking and I hit vocal fry like this, yeah. you know, it's like, what is happening with that? Yeah, it's so like kind of hold out a note like, uh, uh, Okay, so see how those vocal cords there, mm -hmm. did you see how they were vibrating like uh, that? Uh-huh. Okay, now do a normal. Uh, see the difference in how they vibrate there? Yeah. So when you have a vocal fry, uh, 
the vibration is happening very aperiodically, so it's not a regular vibration anymore, and that creates a lot of roughness, and that's what yeah, that's what we hear as roughness when that vibration is not happening regularly and the microphone can't pick it up and that's why the vibration looks blurry on the strobe because it, the signal is so messy huh. that it just can't yeah um i've had a vocal coach or two who would have people use vocal fry as a warm-up technique is I that would, i would disagree with that 100 <laughs> percent. yeah i wondered about that <laughs> yeah i wouldn't do that um, personally, I think it's just, it, well, now, I think that Jeremy might use a version of it to do, like, a relaxed voice, kind of like, so, it does relax your voice, I would not do it too much, because, so, when you do a vocal fry, what you're doing is you're relaxing the muscles a whole lot, and blowing a lot of air through them, and then that vibration gets kind of all chaotic, um, so it's good for relaxing, but when those vocal cords aren't vibrating super regularly against each other, it can become kind of irritating to them. So I see maybe why they were having you do it. I personally would not recommend it. I don't think it's without reason, but I think it could just cause more irritation. Huh. And there's other things you can do to help relax the voice Huh. that I would try. Um, do you want me to try singing something a little harder? You think you've yeah. got, you kind of figured no, out. No, let's so. just, so you can see it too. Let's, uh, yeah, pick something harder, like if you want to do something like belty or anything like that. Um, shoot, I've never tried a belt because that sounds like it will be so painful. <laughs> um, I could do like a little vocalista. Manaka <laughs> solicita. Piu de usato, an corque sagiti, con lieve fiato. Ti da presa, marir, an corque sagito, presa morir. Oh, I see that phlegm. Yep. That so white color. Yeah, here. So let's look at, get a closer look at it. Oops. Yep, just swallow. I'm going to get more water up. You know what? It's probably going to be gone now, though. That's okay. Oh, shoot. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> grab some. just stick your chin forward. Okay, so see, we saw that phlegm, right? Yeah. But it's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So it's gone now, though, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can relax for a second. If you try to relax your shoulders, everything like that. Um, caught me looking. Um, that phlegm pops up. Now, it's normal to have mucus like that pop up on the vocal cords. Sure. Yours is a little white, maybe a little sticky, which indicates a little irritation happening, but it's certainly not bad. And it is easily cleared away by just drinking water. Yeah, yeah. So, I when you feel almost. that, yeah, when you feel that mucus, rather than, like, trying to clear it off by, like, clearing your throat or anything like that, just try swallowing instead because your body is really well designed to get stuff off of the vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it's maybe a little sticky, but look at how shiny your tissues are. That's mm -hmm. really good. Oh, good. So they're nice and hydrated, and it, that mucus will just pop right on off. Yeah, I, that, that is what I try to always do is not to clear a cough, but yeah. just to sip and swallow. Mm -hmm. But I would say in general, you know, not a lot of mucus going on right good. now. Yeah, yeah no, really I'm not feeling good. it. Earlier at my earlier appointment, I did have uh, a brief period where my phonation was interrupted by phlegm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I and so what happens sometimes is when you maybe get a buildup of that mucus, it disrupts the vibration a little bit, or it might also start vibrating, and um, that can cause some roughness in your voice. But yeah, you don't have a huge significant amount right now. Maybe when you tax your voice a little bit more, you might get some, but I would still mm -hmm. try to clear it away with just swallowing. Okay? All right. I think I'm going to head on out, okay? Okay.